On the fateful morning of September 12, 1897, the world would bear witness to an unparalleled display of courage and valor. Assaulted by over 10,000 Afghan tribesmen, 21 Sikh soldiers would give their lives protecting Saragari, a vital communication relay post between British forts in present-day Pakistan. With the Afghans strategically cutting off supply routes, the 21 Sikh of Saragari would have no reinforcements nor extra supplies. Ordered to hold the post at all costs, the Six would immediately begin preparation for their final battle, with no hesitation and no fear. Led by veteran commander Havildari Shar Singh, the 21 men were able to decimate the first line of enemy combatants with ease. Frustrated by the resilience of the Six, the Afghans would devise a new approach, attack the fort from as many angles as they possibly could, to separate the outnumbered Six away from each other. Three hours and nearly seven rounds of attacks later, the Sikhs' unmatched knowledge of the surrounding area and Ishar Singh's decades of experience would foil the Afghan strategy. However, it would still cost the lives of 10 men, and their ammunition would be nearly depleted. Furthermore, the tribesmen had made significant advances towards the post, with some of their soldiers dead just mere yards away from the entrance to the post. Two hours later, the Sikhs' ammunition had completely depleted, yet the supply routes were still blocked, meaning they had just their bayonets and their courage against the incoming forces. The Afghan tribesmen resorted to a primitive tactic, setting the bushes surrounding Fort Saragari ablaze, making it impossible for the Sikh soldiers to see their enemies. Falling back into the inner walls of the fort, the remaining Sikh forces prepared for the incoming onslaught. Severely injured, Havildari Shah Singh then ordered two of his men to drag him towards the incoming forces so that he could buy his men more time, dying in the process. By the time the Afghans had breached the fort, only five Sikh soldiers were left standing. Despite their colossal disadvantage, the Sikhs would not back down. With no ammunition, the six formed a defensive position with their backs against each other and their bayonets pointing outwards. By 3.30 p.m., six and a half hours after their initial conflict, only one Sikh remained, Sepoy Gurmukh Singh. He had been in charge of signaling the battle's progress and requesting reinforcements and supplies from the other forts via heliograph, atop a tower within the fort. His final transmission would be to ask for permission to dismount and join the fight. Moments later, he would have his response. Permission granted. The youngest of the six at 19 years old, he would take down nearly 20 tribesmen before the enemy was forced to set fire to his tower to kill him. When reinforcements were finally able to arrive, they counted nearly 600 dead Afghans surrounding the fort. Although they had failed to defend the fort of Saragari, the 21 Sikh soldiers had delayed the Afghans long enough for the other forts to receive reinforcements and supplies, preventing them from being captured by the enemy. Displaying immeasurable counts of courage and bravery, these men inspired Indian and British forces for the centuries to come. Stories and battles like these are fascinating to come across, as they beg the question, what compels an individual to sacrifice themselves for a greater good? Is it hardwired into the genetics of those courageous and noble individuals? Or is it a conscious choice as one faces certain death? Although I don't have a definitive answer, I hope to explore this topic in greater detail as we take a deep dive into a fictional character that perfectly exemplifies bravery and courage in the face of death. This character is none other than the Ghost of Reach, Noble Six. Very little is known about Spartan B-312, better known as Noble Six. Almost the entirety of his life is all but covered in black ink, shrouded in mystery. He was a shadow among shadows, so much so that even to this day his existence is still unknown to the majority of the UNSC. In this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the little information we have about Six, covering everything from his shrouded past to his courageous final stand. Six was born on January 30th, 2530, in the colony world of Jericho 7. Any information about his parents and early life is locked away by Oni, similar to most other Spartans. One thing for sure though, is that he would survive the glassing of Jericho 7 in 2535, at a mere five years of age. He was presumed to be orphaned due to the glassing, akin to many of the other Spartan 3s. In 2539, at nine years old, he would be recruited into Beta Company, the second class of Spartan 3s. In fact, his service number B312, is the abbreviation of Beta 312, indicating that he was the 312th candidate within the company. Beta Company was comprised of 418 candidates who would undergo physical augmentations and be deployed on near suicidal missions against the Covenant. Amidst these perilous missions, one operation stands amongst the rest as the most devastating. 296 Spartans of Beta Company would be lost during one singular operation, Operation Torpedo, where overwhelming Covenant reinforcements annihilated the UNSC forces within the area. Though Kat was also a part of Beta Company, it remains unknown if she was aware of Six's presence within the company. Months before the operation occurred, however, Six and Kat were pulled out of the company. High-ranking officials within Oni acted decisively to preserve the best of the best, ensuring that they would be spared from certain death. Following his extraction from Beta Company, Six gained a distinguished reputation as a lone wolf assassin. Without any reinforcements, he was single-handedly responsible for shattering insurgent organizations and making entire militia groups disappear. His reputation was so infamous that those who knew of his existence referred to him as more of a hyper-lethal vector rather than a Spartan. 
In fact, his counterinsurgency operations would be one of the main reasons Colonel Holland would select Six to join Noble Team. This reputation would also land him in the Sabre program, a top secret UNSC program that would result in the creation of the Sabre Starfighter, later used by Six and George during the fall of Reach. Prior to his service with Noble Team, one of B-312's superiors, who is still unnamed to this day, enjoyed using Six as his quote-unquote private Grim Reaper, and because of this, he was reluctant to let Six transfer to Noble Team. Six was, in lack of better words, a weapon of pure mass destruction that the UNSC was lucky to have. Despite his unnamed superior's pleas, on July 24th, 2552, Six would join Noble Team, replacing the previous Noble Six, Tom A293. His very first assignment with the team would lead to the first confrontation with the Covenant on the planet of Reach. Six and the rest of Noble Team would go on to partake in a multitude of operations against the Covenant, buying the planet as much time as possible against the unrelenting alien threat. During these operations, a friendship would begin to blossom between Six and George, highlighting a friendlier side to his personality. On August 14th, Six's experience with the Sabre program would prove vital to an operation against the Covenant fleet in Reach's orbit. Both George and Six would be launched into space, utilizing the previously undisclosed Sabre fighters to take a makeshift slipspace bomb to the heart of the Covenant fleet. However, the bomb would be damaged during the operation, and as such, the bomb would need to be manually activated. George would volunteer to activate the bomb, sacrificing his life in the process and severing the otherwise growing friendship between Six and George. The bomb's detonation would successfully destroy the fleet above reach, but Six would bear witness to the arrival of a much larger Covenant fleet that would arrive mere seconds after George's death. Crash landing on Reach, an injured and limping Six would spend almost a week traveling to the burning city of New Alexandria to assist with the UNSC forces defending in the area. Clutching George's dog tags, Six would enter the city with a vengeance, focused on making the Covenant pay for their grave mistake. Focused and motivated, he saved as many civilian transports as he could, losing only one to the bastardly Covenant. Watching the last civilian transport escape the planet, Six would be contacted by Cat, who would inquire about George. Subdued, Six would simply state he didn't make it. Aboard a Pelican dropship en route to the rest of his team, Six would peer outside at the burning hellscape of a city, all alone. Landing on a desolate rooftop, Six would be reunited with Carter, who would let him know that it was good to have him back. Six would sadly reply that he was sorry that he came alone. It's clear that George's death shook the entire team, but Six being at the forefront of both George's death and the Covenant fleet that arrived that made his death utterly meaningless meant that Six was clearly shook the most. Taking the fight against the remaining Covenant forces in the city, Six would extract his vengeance, destroying communication jammers, escorting a not-so-unknown ODST, and single-handedly destroying anti-air defenses, before slaughtering as much of the enemy as he could within the little time he had. Six's new objective would be to evacuate Oni personnel, and single-handedly he'd take out Six Shade turrets before returning to the makeshift HQ that Cat had forged out of a burning tower. Still clutching George's dog tags, Six would be reunited with the rest of his team, who had all been rightfully shaken up by a death of their own. Interrupted by the glassing of the city, Noble Team would rush to the bottom of the tower to take cover in a nearby fallout bunker. Mere meters from the bunker, Carter, June, and Emil would reach the entrance, with Six and Cat seconds behind. As Cat made her way towards the bunker, an elite field marshal that had been anticipating the team's arrival would snipe her from an unnoticed phantom hovering above them. As the needle rifle round pierced through her helmet, Cat's body would crumple to the floor, with Six catching her lifeless body and immediately returning fire with no concern for his own safety. The rest of Noble Team would also return fire, but the Phantom and the Field Marshal would escape unscathed. With the Phantom pulling away, Six would drag Cat's dead body into the bunker. Hours later, Noble Team would step out of the bunker, bearing witness to the city they had known just moments prior, now turn into nothing but lakes of molten glass. As Carter cradled his lifelong teammate's body in his arms, a pelican would emerge from the smoke and darkness to extract what was left of Noble Team. A fractured noble team was then given its next objective, burn sword base to the ground, to prevent the Covenant from gaining access to vital data. Fighting through an overtaken sword base, noble team's objective would be overwritten by an unknown AI, leading them to a secret facility hidden deep underneath sword base, housing a large forerunner vessel embedded in sheets of ice. Dr. Halsey would reveal herself as the one who had updated their objectives, as she would ask noble team to defend her lab as she decrypted more information from the forerunner ship. With little difficulty, Six and his team were able to hold off the incoming Covenant forces. As the last of the alien forces were slain, Halsey would open the doors to her lab, revealing Cortana, an AI she believed would turn the tides in the war against the Covenant. As such, it was imperative that Cortana be transported off the burning planet of Reach, and Halsey would reveal that Cortana had made her choice. She had chosen Six as her courier, as the Spartan that would save humanity. June would be tasked with escorting Halsey to Castle Base, further fracturing an already splintered noble team. The rest of the team would be tasked with flying Cortana to the Pillar of Autumn, a cruiser awaiting the arrival of Cortana and Noble Team to transport them off planet. Under fire by Banshees and Phantoms, their Pelican would take heavy damage, and Carter would become gravely injured. Ordering what was left of his team to jump from their ship and take Cortana to the Pillar of Autumn on foot, Carter's final message to Six personally would be to let him know that Cortana had made the right choice. 
Fighting through Covenant forces on the ground, Emil and Six would make their way towards the Pillar of Autumn, only to be stopped by a scarab impeding their way. Suddenly, Carter would protect his team one last time as he flew his burning pelican into the scarab, sending it crashing out of Six and Emil's way. Arriving at the shipyards of Azad, where the Pillar of Autumn was located, Six and Emil would safely transfer Cortana over to Captain Jacob Keyes. As the Covenant began yet another assault, Six and Emil would hold their ground, protecting the Pillar of Autumn from certain destruction. Manning a Mac cannon, Emil would be ambushed by an elite zealot, who he dispatched of easily. Caught off guard, a second zealot would stab him in the back with an energy sword. Mustering the last bit of energy he had, Emil would fight to the very end, killing the elite who had fatally attacked him before succumbing to his injuries himself. Six would witness the deaths of every single one of his team members, with hardly any time to process any one of their deaths. However, Six was always known for his ability to work as a lone wolf, even in the most dire circumstances. With no one left to man the Mac cannon needed to defend the Pillar of Autumn, Six would turn down Captain Key's request for him to come on board and escape Reach. Signing a death sentence, Six would guard the ship with no hesitation, allowing the Pillar of Autumn to escape into space and humanity to live another day. With most of the UNSC fleeing or dead, the Covenant were able to disable the last of Reach's defenses and were able to glass the entire planet with no worry. However, they didn't account for Noble Six, who was among the last surviving UNSC forces on the planet. Single-handedly, the Ghost of Reach held off an entire army of Covenant forces, including wraiths and air support. But after countless hours of holding his own, the relentless Covenant forces were able to injure an exhausted Six. Even while exhausted beyond belief, injured and all alone, Six was able to take on and slaughter multiple elite Ultras and Zealots before finally succumbing to his death. Symbolic of his courage and unrelenting spirit, Six's helmet would remain on reach even through a Covenant glassing, and even after the planet had been terraformed. Dr. Halsey would regret that he had not lived to see the end of the war he had known his entire life, and not been able to celebrate humanity's eventual victory, which was largely possible due to Six and Noble Team. Those brave enough to have already passed the torch have stood tall against the enemy for as long as humanity has been around. The Battle of Saragari and the countless other named and unnamed battles in history inspire us to be courageous, to stare down the enemy and give it our all, even in the face of certain defeat. These battles inspired art and stories for the entirety of human society, with some modern day interpretations taking the form of video games. Halo Reach does an excellent job of shredding our hearts to pieces as we witness a planet's final stand against a ruthless enemy. An immeasurable amount of courage is required to sacrifice yourself for the greater good, but even more so when the greater good is not guaranteed. Which begs the question, would you choose to give your life if it meant there was a small chance that other people got to live?